Do you know millions of people worldwide experience chronic pain from arthritis? Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one out of every four persons, adult persons that is, experiences severe pain. And half of people with arthritis experience persistent pain. Now, try to bring those terms into perspective. For severe pain on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being no pain felt at all, 10 being as bad as you can get, 7 and over is severe. And for persistent, this is pain, pain felt mostly on a daily basis for at least three months. And so understanding this perspective, you might ask, why do I feel pain? Doctor, why do I feel experience pain? Now, there's a saying back in my medical school, common things occur commonly. And so I'm going to highlight the most likely. So talking about why you're feeling this pain, before we highlight the most likely, let me remind you, when it comes to your health and issues or factors affecting your health, it is so unique to you. No one by mere interview can tell you exactly what the problem is. And that is why for an objective assessment, it's always best you consult your primary care provider who will take an extensive history, do a physical examination, and by way of lab investigations and imaging investigation can properly assess what the problem is and hence give you the proper management. And so, talking about that, I would also say that this medium should not be used as a primary referral or any medium similar to this because obviously there is limitation to what can be done regarding or said regarding your health. And so again, it's best to seek your primary care provider when it comes to issues relating to your health. That being said, let's get back. So joint pain, also known as arthralgia, is the most common manifestation of arthritis, that is inflammation of the joint. And common sites for arthritis include the hip, the knee, the shoulder, the lower back, the fingers, especially the thumb, the, the base of the thumb. As long as it's a joint, it's gonna be prone to arthritis, right? But these are, however, uh, certain areas seem to be more common than other areas. Now, the causes for arthritis vary. The most common is what we refer to as wear and tear. And another name for this, which actually is the medical name, is osteoarthritis. There are certain factors or risk factors that could accelerate the process of um, osteoarthritis, especially aging. Just like said, wear and tear. This comes with um, prolongation of use, right? So aging is the most common. And then other predisposing factors, you have um, female sex. So just by bare being a female, you tend to have that, um, you tend to be more predisposed earlier to osteoarthritis compared to the male counterpart. Also genetics, obesity. So there are several, but these are the very common factors that could uh, predispose to um, that aging, wear and tear processes of uh, osteoarthritis. Now, other causes, um, apart from that wear and tear, um, include inflammation. Inflammation comes in various forms. You have autoimmune processes. You have inflammation um, reaction from um, infections, i.e. viral infections. There's also chronic systemic illnesses within the body. So um, for autoimmune, What's inflammation? Inflammation occurs when the body responds to um, the presence of a foreign element or maybe an assault within the body. It brings out, um, it produces chemicals that can tend to counteract this assault in order to restore to normal. But unfortunately, most times in the process of trying to restore to normal, um, certain reactions happen within the body and those reactions tend to be on itself um, manifest as some form of illness, should I use the word, right? So in autoimmune, the body is responding against its own, um, it's fighting its own tissue, right? And th th there could be um, reasons for this. And we're not going into, into that anyway. So examples, you have rheumatoid arthritis. It's an autoimmune process. Um, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. And there are several, but these conditions have the um, um, arthritis manifestation. They could manifest in forms of, uh, they, they have that um, component whereby the there is joint inflammations, right? That um, manifest during these illnesses. There's also, like I mentioned, um, um, infections, um, a typical example, viral infections. 
For cases of viral infections, especially, it's transient. So it might be manifesting for a few days and typically it tends to resolve on its own. Um, there's also inflammation as a result of um, systemic illnesses. Example, um, inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. These will have their um, a sequelae of um, arthritis too. Now, this is in addition to the other um, comorbidities that present with these illnesses. So there's the inflammatory component of the causes of um, arthritis. Um, I will also talk about another cause, another form or category, and this I will use others, right? Typical example um, is when you have deposits, deposits that um, accumulate within joint surfaces. A typical example of this is gout or pseudogout. In gout, you have uric acid that accumulates within the articular surfaces of the joints. And most times you have the big toe as a very common area for um, deposits of these um, crystal structures. Now, these crystals are not rubies and sapphires. They are actually uh, accumulates of um, substances that normally circulate uh, in, that are normally found in circulation, but in increased amount, these now deposits within the joint. The kidney normally would eliminate these um, um, substances, but like I said, when the the amount becomes um, um, at a toxic level or a very increased level, the extras get deposits deposited in um, the articular surfaces of the joints, and gout is a very common example. Now there are certain things or factors that could predispose one to having gout or gouty manifestations. Binge alcohol taking is a very common um, cause of gouty attacks. Also, there are certain drugs that could predispose to gouty attacks. Um, if someone that's taking a, um, the water pill or um, antihypertensive, um, hydrochlorothiazide, HTTZ, um, at times if, um, if one is easily predisposed to gouty attacks, it's times being on these medications, especially with with other many um, medications that could also you know spur this attack, yeah, this is um, something that could easily um, predispose to gouty attacks. Um, even diets, um, there are certain people that um, have that um, um, that are easily prone to having high uric levels. So um, when they take what um, we have um, diets that are high in purine content. Um, example will be mushroom, red meat. These are foods that ha have high purine content. And so when um, they are easily, they could easily be prone to gouty attacks if um, the diet is not monitored. So there's always the, you know, caution on, okay, if you're prone to gouty attacks, be careful on your kind of diet, right? So these are... Um, types of very common manifestations of arthritis. Okay, so there are many other forms of arthritis, but I'm gonna discuss the common ones. Like I said, common things are called commonly. So the next question you'll ask is, okay, now we have, I know the various causes, how do I relieve myself of this pain? I can't stand this pain. Now doctor, now that we know the most likely cause of arthritic pain, how can we remedy the pain? As always, my first advice is to consult your primary care provider because your primary care provider not only considers the pain component, there are other aspects that are going to be of interest to your doctor. What is the pattern of distribution? Is it just that joint? Are there multiple other joints involved? Now, are both sides of your body feeling that pain? Is it on your left or right or right and left? You know, what are the other comorbidities? Are you having fever? Is there swelling? Is there a history of STD? How about your bathroom habits? Have they changed? There are just several questions that will help to shed light on the problem, the cause of the arthritic pain, and hence um, help with the management, the proper management. And so it's always advisable to see your primary care provider. Having said that, what can we do? First things first, I always emphasize on prevention. Yes, prevention. Now, our body, like any other thing that is precious to us, we want to maintain right uh, our bodies, right? And this helps to um, prolong, to preserve 
and have that prolonged use, right? There's the importance of our diets, what we feed into our body. And so the first um, element of prevention will be our diets. We want to take diets that are rich in fruits and vegetables because these provide the essential ingredients that the body uses to restore and repair, right? And preserve right, in terms of our joint surfaces. So fruits and vegetables, right? And also exercises. Now be careful, I'm still talking about prevention, right? Because when it comes to exercising, if we're actually manifesting with a joint pain and we're not sure of the cause, if it's due to trauma, right? Say a fracture is involved. You wanna be careful on maneuvering those parts involved in the joint pain, right? So exercise but be cautious we're talking about prevention so diets and exercise most times those go hand in hand the other element is avoid avoid alcohol excessive alcohol consumption i talked about the importance of um, alcohol when it comes to manifestation of gouty attacks binge alcohol intake can cause or um, produce gouty attacks so be careful and in general alcohol excessive alcohol consumption is not good uh, for many reasons right so avoid excessive alcohol consumption avoid smoking smoking um, takes into the body or uh, brings um, toxic metabolites into a body that are not um, helpful they, they, they destroy the tissues of the body so avoid um, alcohol, um, smoking in addition to alcohol. And also when it comes to medications, we also want to inform our doctors what we're taking. Those various, we have several supplements right now, right, in the stores. The, the And these um, supplements that are um, sold as medicines, they could have some adverse effects which we might not be um, aware of. So you want to um, inform your doctor what kind of supplements that you're taking. And if you're taking multiple medications, you also want to, um, your doctor anyway, your primary care provider will be aware of those various medicines you're taking. But you really just want to be careful on the um, um, medicines or supplements you by yourself resort to. Maybe someone has advised you, this is good for this, but you don't know the effects or the side effects, right, of those supplements you're taking. So be careful right? Okay. Now, when it comes to addressing the pain, there's several um, 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 over-the-counter medicines that could help to um, address certain kinds of joint pain, i.e. acetaminophen. Acetaminophen is present in several brands like Tylenol, um, Calpol, Excedrin, uh, Panadol, right? And this is good for addressing issues like um, wear and tear, that is osteoarthritis, right? Um, however, at times, this is not enough to address the pain associated with osteoarthritis. And so your primary care provider, um, having aware that you're already taking acetaminophen and it's not providing um, um, enough relief, might um, refer to a second line in form of an NSAID. These are called um, uh, like ibuprofen, NSAID, um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? Um, such as ibuprofen, this is present in medicines like Motrin, Advil, right? And these also might be first line for um, pain as a result of inflammatory causes now, i.e. rheumatoid arthritis, right? So these go hand in hand if um, the um, acetaminophen does not address issues with osteoarthritis, they might result to, okay, let's use um, ibuprofen to see if that addresses it. And depending on the kind of joint pain and what the cause, right? These two drugs most times might be first line. And then if these two don't address it, there might be to there might be need to take stronger medicines that contain some components of opioids. And now, now we have to be very careful when it comes to taking medicines that have opioids because um, obviously they are addictive effects. And most times for joint pain, um, there are certain medicines that have some opioid infusion, but it's still, it, there's still that safety um, therapeutic index, right? So there are drugs like tramadol that is stronger than um, um, the acetaminophens and um, um, ibuprofens and naproxens, etc., that could help to alleviate the pain. Now, should those pain medicines still not address the um, um, pain? Um, now, the, 
your doctor, your primary care provider might subscribe to maybe a joint replacement, right? So um, also uh, beware for drugs like um, NSAIDs, uh, many t um, categories of medicines that are under this um, broad classification. But your doctor also has to be aware of history of bleeding, right? So there are certain medicines that might not be given to a certain group of people because of certain comorbidities in them. Maybe they have issues with bleeding. Maybe they have kidney issues, right? So that's also emphasizing the importance of seeking the help of your primary care provider. Okay, so apart from the pain medicines, right, there's also the use of physical therapy, right? They could um, advise swimming. It's certain exercises like swimming, right? And these help to, um, you know, help to preserve joint function um, just to sustain the integrity of the joint, right? So there's physical therapy. There are other agents also, apart from the ones mentioned, that could be applied topically around the joint area that could help to relieve joint pain, right? So these are the very common um, um, medicines and tools to address joint pain. Having said that, um, I think I'm, I'll come to the end now of this topic. And I do hope you did find this informative. Do let me know. And um, I will um, have other, in the future, have other talks. Hopefully, I, this is something that will come on weekly. Um, if you've enjoyed this, I would like you to like and subscribe so you can have more contents. And I will see you in the next one.